Baka Baka. Sucker for love. First date. Chapter 1. Lynetta, my really scary girlfriend. For what purpose have you awoken Lanetta the Star Spawn and brought about the end of reality?
You wish to be the first human to be destroyed, yes? So that you are spared from the cataclysm I shall wreak upon all life? Eh? What? Don't say it again, creep! Then how are you looking directly at me without being driven mad? Send me back. I'll do it next time. M maybe when the stars realign in a thousand years or so. Exactly. Where'd you get that book? That moo. Always trying to set me up with someone. It's not a Necronomicon. What Necronomicon is bright pink, silly? It's a survival guide. For dating me. Mm-hmm. It's full of rituals that I like. Offerings, spells, and how to protect your sanity while performing them. I am a cosmic entity beyond comprehension. So no amount of contact with me is safe for a human. Your mind could snap like a reed at any moment, actually. Oh, don't make that face. I can make it worth your while, if you understand what I'm getting at. If you can make it to the end, darling. But if you chicken out or go insane, I'll end reality right then and there. Now, you knew what you were getting into when you woke me up, right, darling? Let's begin the date then. Why don't you start with the invoke the depths ritual? What's with the worried look, darling? But you aren't alone. I'm here. Long-term health? The world ends when this date does. What does it matter if your mind is unraveling? Nobody is in this world for the long haul anymore. Well, you better finish them quickly then. To us. Didn't you read the spell's name? Our connection is stronger now. The closer you get to where my true form lies dreaming, the stronger my influence on you in this world. Just focus on following the book perfectly. You're good to start doing these rituals on your own, right? I'm just feeling a little icky from the summoning, so I wanted to use your shower. Do you mind? <laughs> Thanks. No peeking. I mean it. Don't peek. Mm -hmm. You're sure you won't? Alright, I'll be back in a jiffy.
love foggy, rainy days by the sea. It's like my favorite weather on the surface world. I didn't know you have a house on the water! Ah, <sighs> there's something just so romantic about standing on a balcony during a storm. What's wrong, darling? Getting chilly? We can go inside if you like, but it's not like it's any safer in there. After all, the next page in the book has an unspeakable horror on it. You'll see what I mean. Unspeakable horror! Unspeakable! Get it? As in, cannot be spoken. At least not by humans. Of course I can! I can pronounce anything! Anything. Worcestershire sauce? Toy boat, 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 toy boat.
awesome! And I thought you were cute for a human before! Now you're totally my type! Darling, all it needs is a little something and it'll be perfect. Hmm. I'm going to take a short walk outside while you finish. See you in a few, love. Sheet. I can tell by the look on your face. You caught a glimpse of the real world now that I'm waking up. Guess you aren't as sane as you thought, huh, darling? Oh, sweetie, don't worry about reality. It doesn't have anything to do with you anymore. Though, I should tell you, everything you saw and heard, it's still there. What you saw coming through your window is still coming through. Very soon, it'll be impossible to deny its presence, and even escaping reality won't protect you. If you like, I could move you to the front of the line and end you painlessly myself, as thanks for waking me up. You wouldn't hear their screams anymore, or feel that chill up your spine where that tentacle is already touching. Or maybe you'd prefer to be saved for last, have the whole doomed world all for yourself for a while. Though the things you'd see if you lingered, being destroyed first or last, which would you prefer, my darling?
wish you could make offerings like this forever. Well, my devoted darling, there is only one last spell to perform. Pledging yourself to me. Take heart. Your pledge of devotion will be the last act of humanity for all of time. The final words ever spoken by humankind will come from your fairy mouth and echo into oblivion. The privilege is yours alone. I may be inexperienced with human emotions, but even I know that saying goodbye to your world can be painful. Take all the time you need to make peace with the end. I'm going to take a short nap before I wake up for good. Could you hit the lights for me, darling? Thank you, my love. Ritual. You did wonderfully. <laughs> I'm afraid it's time for the dream and our date to end. That look on your face. Darling, I had a wonderful date with you, and that's because of you. So why destroy me and all of reality? Why not just stay here with me? That's what you're thinking. Right? Oh, my sweet mortal darling. I'm not doing this out of malice. You've had good dreams before, right? Well, when you woke up, you destroyed those dream worlds and everything in them. Did you wake up because you hated those dreams? No. It just couldn't be helped that you'd wake up eventually. I love humans. And I'll miss you sorely. Please let your last thoughts be about that. Don't think I forgot about my promise to you. Buckle up, my darling. You've earned it. Thank you, my love.
you break our connection? I'm cut off from the rest of me! How could you... Why did you... Why did you break my heart? But why? Was I not good enough? Did you have a bad time on our date? Is there... Is there another woman? And... What? But you woke me up in the first place! <laughs> oh, darling. You realize I still have control here, right? If you want to smooch my real form, you have no choice but to do the spells over! Wait, what?
Lynetta, huh? Who is this Lynetta you're trying to call? I just so happened to overhear you saying, Lynetta, where are you? You sounded like you were in trouble, so I let myself in. Your window is open. Lynetta sounds like a girl's name, right? This Lynetta is obviously the girl you stood me up for, isn't she? Cursed devices used to channel eldritch magics and do the bidding of outer gods. No, I've just been playing coy. I know exactly what you've been doing. You know what this is, don't you? Anything? I can be rather... demanding. So bold. In that case, I have three commands. Number one, you'll address me as Your Highness from now on. So when I come home, it's welcome home, Your Highness. Number two, you'll quit your job so you can spend every waking moment catering to me, your one and only. And number three, you'll obey every order and whim I have, absolutely, without question. Do you agree to my terms? Absolutely what? If you will do whatever I ask, then there's no need to use any of these dreadful spells on you. As a matter of fact, I believe you can help me with them. Here. you for a long time and you're a capable bookkeeper handsome to boot there's no reason we can't simply work together after all a relationship based on threats of violence and fear is no good right
Your Worcestershire sauce? What about it? What? How did you figure that out so suddenly? Worcestershire. Of course not, it's an Eldritch loan word. Why else would it be spelled like that? <sighs> I was careless. After all this time, I wasted trying to seduce you in this slovenly form. What? You think cosmic entities are attractive? As a human? That you're attracted to my cosmic godhood. I would have just led with that. <clears throat> Allow me to properly introduce myself. I am Esther, King in Yellow, heiress to Carcosa. Charmed, I'm sure. and devoted. That's why I want you to be my follower instead. In exchange for serving me, I shall grant you anything you desire. Wealth, power, whatever that rotten witch Lynetta offered you, I can double it. And I shall... What, what, what? You handed over your reality to her? For a singular smooch? Are you mad? I... I s suppose... If that's all you're selling the world for, then a smooch... Can be... Uh, arranged? Satisfied? I just... Usually, my followers ask for inordinate wealth, unquestionable fame and influence, or some lavish indulgence. N nobody's ever dared to ask to kiss me before, s so... You really want to smooch me? Well, <clears throat> your terms are amenable. Suffice it to say, I'll expect you to perform your scenes flawlessly in exchange. The prompt book I gave you contains the script for the King in Yellow. Rituals? Is this some sort of peasant joke that I'm too rich to understand? No, we aren't barbaric swamp folk casting hocus pocus in a cave. We have a little class. To invoke my power, my play must be performed. Perfectly. Your performance will receive a scathing review in the Carcosan Times publication. And you'll also be killed. Break a leg, dearest.
Shadows lengthen dim streets darken to the curfew thou must hearken why so loudly does thou bark in the dim city of Yatil. Only much attention quite unwholesome you'll instill from the souls of poor Yatil. Why attract so much ill will? Your plans shall surely languish, and this whole town will know anguish for the king as whom they say, which shall this city indeed smite. If he comes, you tell him you and I will know his might. I'll be lost within a night. What reward is worth that price? to the stage, I can tell. A virtuoso of the bard, are we? If you've performed Shakespeare, then you must be an actor of sufficient ability to survive my play. Tell me, what role were you? The leading man, I presume. I... wasn't aware that was a role. You weren't even the leading tree. I thought you said you were a tree. Oh, you are good. Don't fret, dearest. Something is simply passing between my planet's light and your bedroom. A cloud, perhaps. You know the proverb, wherever the golden light of Carcosa shines, the shadow of the unspeakable one is cast? It's a literal rule. I can only be wherever the light of my planet star Carcosa shines. In other words, I can't reach you at night when you're not standing in natural light or if anything obstructs your view of Carcosa. With you, I wanted to stay a little longer. Alas, parting is such sweet sorrow. It may be some time until your sky clears. Until then, I bid you adieu.
Darling, it's you! That reality fell to me. Nothing there exists anymore. Like a dream that ends. Oh, darling, don't make me say it. It's embarrassing. You're still here because I'm... I'm still dreaming about you. Everything in existence is being dreamed about by at least one Eldritch God. So as long as you're on my mind, you'll exist somewhere. Everything, including all of the gods, would cease to be. Nah, don't worry! There's about 50 of us total, so the chances of all of us being awake at the same time are low. Mm-hmm. Kind of a big family, huh? Esther. Darling, I thought I told you not to mention other women while we're together. Especially not my sister. Ugh, I can't stand that prissy little boyfriend stealing! Absolutely not! We've been fighting over planets and followers for eons! It wouldn't be a stretch to call us nemeses. Darling? What's that on your forehead? It looks like a lipstick mark. That's not from another god. Is it, darling? Because if it is, well, you die here. It's what? Say something. Ritual paint? Oh, really? Which ritual? I'm going to pretend that this lipstick mark came from a human girlfriend, so that I can spare you. But from now on, if you contact another god, I swear I'll stop being so sweet. Okay? not. Why would I care about that? When it's a race against other gods to amass as many followers as possible, expecting your followers to be celibate is a bad move. For Grammy Roxanne, it's actually a requirement that you start a big family, or you get excommunicated from her following. Oh, I'm sure you've heard of her. She's got the most followers out of any of us. She's the Black Goat of the Woods, or the Mother Goddess of Fertility. No funny ideas, mister. There's no telling what I'd do if you cheated on me with a family member.
such a nice day outside. It's a little dry for my liking, but we could totally have a date date. Why don't you open your window? Let a little light in here? But what? What is it? What do you mean? Huh? Why would you suggest that? Oh no, don't tell me. Do I still smell like the ocean? Heavens below. I'm so sorry, darling. I'll be right back. No peeking fun, I love you. Speak my name, dearest. There's a reason I am she who is not to be named. A mortal saying Esther summons me to them. You have many options. You may call me your majesty, your grace, my king. Oh! <laughs> you could even call me your royal highness if you're feeling particularly subservient. Up well, I'm impressed. You'd be presentable before my royal court in that. Quite the opposite, dearest. Your face is molding to fit the mask. to mention that we reenact the play with deadly accuracy. From this point on in the play, your character never removes his mask. So neither shall you. This surely shouldn't be a problem for someone who is planning to be my eternal servant. Correct? The mask and your face have become one. Your every pore is now gilt and gold.
Lay thine hands upon my bodice, for before you stands a goddess. Know this guest of Goldenrod is merely the first of the night. Let us drink to your great wealth and family and life, lasting till your afterlife all be yours once he arrives. Graciously obeisant, demonstrate a courtly patience. He declines no invitation he receives upon his court. All who live in doomed you till will know without report. The king arrived by your escort. A prophecy of grim import. of greed, influence, and fame. He dies penniless, alone, and infamous. Comedy is merely tragedy from far enough away, dearest. that you might get cold feet after learning of your character's fate. However, my wrath is terror far beyond a touch of stage fright. So, for your sake, dearest, do the f***ing scene. Don't intend to merely watch me eat, dearest. Ah, ah, ah! That's not what I meant. Instead of watching me eat this feast, you'll feed it to me. Just a moment, dearest. What is the thread count of your silken sheets? At least 1,000, I presume. <sighs> Perhaps I'll just stand while you feed me instead. Come <laughs> 
My lips have already touched it. If you want an indirect kiss, you'll have to be more clever than that. Of course not. Oh, heavens below, yes! I am pleased by this new attitude of yours, dearest. It's your actions that permitted this result truly befitted to a hunger such as thine. Though your greed is grave and tomb and crypt in which you die, it's within your grease you fry. Dearest host, the end is nigh. King in yellow, whose long shadow is on your tail, and whose shadow you're in still. Dark as death is now your tail.
I've granted all your wishes, I'm afraid I disagree. All alone you are with all of your remaining family. And as vision turns to darkness, you have claim to all you see. And you'll wear that mask and robe for the rest of all your life indeed. And the strong will fall to illness, haunt you till with crypt-like stillness. And none left alive to witness my ascension to you till. And from the catacombs shall spill the cries of innocence laid still. He heard from lady and from smithy and from throne to peasant mill. Cries unprecedented in the history of your till. Wails unlike they'll ever be again in dark your till. That your invitation's quill brought the king to black your till. Dearest smiles, aren't you proud of yourself? To ensure you stay in character, call it method acting, if you will. Oh, with sweet sorrow, the curtain falls, and the show begins. The stage is now set for you to inscribe the yellow sign. Do this, and I will bestow upon you the smooch I promised. Even now, that's really all you can think about? Your world is about to be enslaved by a horror from beyond the stars. You're dying from a stab wound. And you're worried about smooches? You are... an interesting human. It is a pity that you'll soon cast away your individuality for me. The yellow sign. Become my slave, my eternal captive audience. I am entropy. Disorder. Where things are built tall, I appear to knock them down. Monuments. Nations. Relationships. Steal the hearts and minds of the rich or powerful to break them and litter my court with them like gold dust. Because I am the breeze of chaos that knocks down any tower that challenges the grandness of my court. Your relationship with my sister was one of those things. Before, I only pursued you because you have a great deal of cloud amongst the night-going crowd and shrewd wealthy types. You would have been an incredibly powerful servant who would have been able to draw in countless wayward souls that meet my standards. At least, until that reality ended and you undid all of my hard work. All of my followers that I had stolen from Lynetta. Gone in an instant. And I had no choice but to abandon that reality. There's nothing left to destroy if nothing exists, you see. But in this reality, 
I've stolen away her most powerful asset. You. Just as I've stolen every member of my entourage. Why? Because it's what I do. Why aren't you under the effects of the yellow sign? Were you... unaffected? Did... did the spell fail? You're supposed to be obsessed with me! <laughs> you can try and resist it all you want, but one way or another... You're my eternal slave from now on. No, dearest, I'm not talking about marriage. What I'm talking about is catering to my every whim, anticipating my every desire, and living solely to please me. No! I'm talking about a servitude where you do nothing but kiss the ground I walk on and revere me for all of time! A servitude unlike anything on Earth, where you never so much as think of anyone else! It's different! Is too! It means no freedom! Forever! You are only permitted to do as I say! And it means preparing every single one of my meals for me, whenever I so wish. And it means never being allowed to quit your servitude. You'll never be free of me so long as you live. Exactly! your relationship with Lynetta. Why are you being so persistent? You can't really want to marry me that badly. You're just trying to act all smooth, so I give you your second smooch. <laughs> you can't be serious. Right? Chapter 3, Neon Lafotep's Catastrophe. Fear of the unknown is the single strongest fear of mankind. Terrors from beyond the borders of knowledge. And yet, the truest horror has been in mankind's cradle since the beginning and walks the earth amongst us now. For true evil exists not in the devil unseen, but the devil seen and unrecognized. When you meet her, you realize that tucking away the rest of the horrors to the unseen corners of the stars is a blessing. A shade of a thousand manifestations, each more horrific than the last. She serves only one whose chaotic and phantasmagorical wishes she obeys with extreme prejudice. 
But enough about me. Let's talk about you. Well, well, well. You're the one that Lynetta calls darling and that Esther calls dearest, aren't you? Speak up. I'm an older god, so I'm a little hard of hearing. Are you or are you not the human that has been dating my nieces? Good. Would you like a cup of hot tea? A cold glass of water. You've been through a lot. I just wanted to ensure you're at ease for now. Are you certain this is your room? Who am I? I am the obscure, the unutterable. I am the crying chaos. When mankind pushes out into the unknown, I am the unknown that pushes back. But just like my troublesome nieces, you can just call me Auntie Nyan Nyan. Never been visited by someone so high up in rank as me, have you? Silly question. There's only one that outranks me, and if you had met her, neither of us would still exist. My, my, you're still holding on, eh? I expected you to last long enough to chat, but it seems you're nearing your limit. Let me offer you some words of assurance. I'm the last outer god you'll ever have to see. I mean that things are about to return to abnormal. <laughs> Eldritch horrors will return to being obscure boogeymen that stalk unbeknownst to their prey. The veil shall be lowered again until the gate opens and mankind is eradicated. In other words, you'll never see me or my family ever again. Did you know that even amongst gods there are things that are strictly taboo? You see, whenever mankind starts exploring too far, too quickly, you accelerate the end of all things. So we appear to slow things back down. We scare you back to the safety of the familiar. We whisper evils and destructive mantras to the most dangerous of your kind to ensure progress slows. Because the longer you stay afraid, the longer you live. To put it simply, once mankind isn't afraid of us anymore, everything will come to an end. Humans are doomed to explore, and once mankind makes the last discovery, once mankind reaches the edge of the map, you'll fall off. So if there's one thing that is certain amidst this infinite cosmos, it's that for all of time, our relationship is shepherd and livestock, as we set the pace to the slaughterhouse. In that context, outer gods and humans being romantically involved is beyond taboo. It's upsetting the natural order and is a conflict of interest, to say the least. 
Now, all of this I can forgive because my troublesome nieces led you astray. I know you didn't mean to participate in such a grave taboo, right? Good, then we can work together to ensure it'll never happen again. You're familiar with these books, yes? I had one made for just this occasion. Do what needs to be done. Perform the Banish Mu ritual. <laughs> Mu is the bookmaker, so it will prevent eldritch gods and humans from dating ever again. No more books can be made, and the entity responsible for bridging the gap between our realms will be destroyed. Our relationship will return to strictly business, in a manner of speaking. Do not force me to remind you the grave seriousness of the situation. I promise you've never seen anything like what I can do. Looking for this, dog? You may be capable of pulling a fast one on my nieces, but nothing escapes my gaze. I think you'll find it quite impossible to cast that counter evil without this amulet. Now, my stray sheep, it's time I shepherd you back in line. But first... <laughs> mind is still on your side. Do you still trust it? We'll see who it sides with soon. I've walked the earth while man was still rocking in its cradle. I know not only what scares you, but what terrified every single one of your ancestors. an eye-opener for you.
Was that too easy for you? We've only begun to lift the veil. Let's see how you handle the next one, dog. What's that outside your window? could outwit me in the end. expected those to be a challenge. These next horrors won't be so easy to dispel. your concentration now. Starting to have trouble. Are these horrors becoming too challenging for you to withstand? <laughs> oh, you can't begin to imagine the horrors I can show you. And soon, you won't have to imagine. It's found you.
Sí. Haven't surrendered yet, dog. I, I'm impressed. You've got backbone for a human of your age. But I doubt your will to survive will last much longer. Your voice won't be heard again. all that just one human in such a short time becoming I can't believe it you're no average human but you still can't escape me the ultimate wrath of the clawing chaos is upon you hold fast and prepare yourself dog <laughs> then you lack imagination. Your voice won't be heard again.
to add to. What's that outside your window? None of them could outwit me in the end. your concentration now. You! You're still standing? How? In fact, the longer this has been going on, you've seemed more and more resolved. It's not possible. There's no emotion stronger than fear, and no fear more powerful than fear of the unknown. You're not even stuttering anymore. Why aren't you cowering before me? It, it can't be. It's love. What? Ridiculous! You're saying pure lust is keeping you from being scared of me? Not when one of them is the danger. You, don't you understand the cruel indifference of the infinite cosmos? Your world, your reality, everything you know and love, it's all meaningless and could vanish in an instant. Even as we speak, your sun spins around the precipice of terminal oblivion.
It can't be. You, you think you can turn the tables on me? from me a human too lustful to fear anything could such a thing even exist what horror as soon as any of us dreams again he undoubtedly will return to haunt our hearts once more oh i'm never getting a good night's sleep with him on the loose Dream.